You write about this term black identity extremist. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? So, I mean, that's, that's the question. What are we talking about? Because uh, it appears to be a very arbitrary designation. Uh, and so they, if you read the report, they talk about uh, people who uh, have an animus toward police, uh, who are motivated by what they perceive as uh, racial grievances, but there is no connection to an organization or to uh, a kind of ideological uh, leader uh, figure or cult figure. Uh, and then they say that they're worried about uh, some of these individuals being radicalized by the sovereign citizen uh, movement. But then they later in the report say that there's no evidence that there's actually any interaction or connection with the sovereign citizen uh, movement. So at the end of it, it seems as if the report exists solely to create a kind of language, an umbrella that you can arbitrarily use uh, for uh, you know, all sorts of purposes, very many of which would likely be surveillance of African-American activists. And isn't there a big difference that there was a lot of violence uh, in the 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. and while there was assassinations of African-American leaders, mm -hmm. there were also unrest incidents. There were also sure. riots. Right. Right now, as someone who, who covers law enforcement mm -hmm. issues, um, most of that has been on the hate crime side of white supremacist groups right. and these uh, rallies mm -hmm. and the disappear the Jews and all of the, Charlottesville, we're not seeing any imbalance. So how do you account for that? No, there's been a, a great deal of lethargy around this. And if you remember, one of the things that activists uh, have pointed out, even going back to what happened in Charleston in 2015, is that there was no, uh, there was no designation of Dylan Roof's actions as terrorist. Uh, by the FBI, something that James Comey was criticized for. Uh, when he was targeting a black church. That's right, he was targeting Explicitly. a black church. Explicitly. Explicitly in the attempt to uh, create a kind of racial conflict. And so, race uh, war. Yeah, race war. Yep. The US, and the U.S. Code defines terrorism as uh, ideologically motivated violence intended to produce a political outcome. There has to be this element of political outcome to it. And that's certainly a political objective, but the FBI refrained from that. Uh, and so there's been a weird kind of asymmetry in terms of how they use these designations. It's such an important story, and, and your article at New Yorker is, is really an important contribution to mm -hmm. it. I also want to ask you about something else entirely, because mm -hmm. you've been such an interesting analyst and critic <laughs> of the president. I, I was actually speaking last night um, to the co-author from Art of the Deal, Tony Schwartz. Mm -hmm. The interview with him made some news. Tony knows very well Donald Trump having worked closely with him and here is part of the interview where he made a revelation. Mm -hmm. I know that two different people from the White House, or at least saying they were from the White House and that turned out to be a White House number, have called somebody I know in the last several weeks to say, we are deeply concerned about his mental health. I believe there are people who are concerned. Most of them, I think, are hostages to a cult leader. When you watch Sarah Huckabee Sanders right now, you really feel as if you're watching somebody who is being brainwashed. All of America needs to understand that this is a person who is now exceptionally dangerous because he is losing his grip. A co-author of Art of the Deal, mm -hmm. that is not what we would call medical evidence, it's right. not from a doctor, mm -hmm. but it is journalistic evidence of what he calls two people in the White House mm -hmm. lodging this concern. Mm -hmm. uh, as a, as a, a journalist and analyst, how, how do you view this? Uh, well, I mean, I don't even have to kind of go strictly from the journalistic perspective. There's this book that came out, Duty to Warn, uh, in which 25 people who are mental health professionals uh, said that they were deeply concerned. These are people who have not uh, treated or examined uh, Mr. Trump in person. But they've said, that in their clinical opinions, that he exhibits many characteristics and traits that they find to be uh, consistent with a mentally unwell person. Uh, that's something I think that we should take very seriously. These are not conversations that... Uh, we typically have. We would say, oh, well, uh, Obama did this, that's crazy, or, you know, before that people would say Bush, you know, did this, that's nuts. But they meant that kind of uh, colloquially. We're having actual substantive conversations with people who know about these issues, saying this is something that we at least need to examine and, and discuss. Yeah, I think that's important. Mm. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.